The activity of the H2 receptor blocker is pretty self-explanatory. They block the main pathway that leads to acid secretion at the H2 receptor on parietal cells. Now, H2 blockers are one of two categories of acid suppressing medication, the other being the proton pump inhibitors. They use for a lot of the same things, but they're unequivocally the weaker of the two. And it's not hard to see where the flaw in the plan is. While they block off the main pathway that leads to acid secretion, there's a couple of other pathways to acid secretion that are still active. So acid secretion decreases, but some baseline acid secretion is maintained by the alternate pathways. The drug names all end in idine. Cimetidine, ranitidine, famotidine, and nizatidine are the four that you're going to see. Of these, cimetidine is the oldest of these drugs, and it's the only one that really has any major side effects. It's a cytochrome P450 inhibitor and acts as an antiandrogen. You may know it as the C in Magic Rax and GQ and Some Drugs Create Awesome Knockers. As I'm saying it, I'm realizing exactly how many of these medical mnemonics sound like they were written by 13-year-old boys. Like that one about the cranial nerves and the one about the wrist bones and the... You get the idea. Cimetidine also crosses the blood-brain barrier, which is usually okay, but in rare cases it leads to dizziness and in the elderly possibly even confusion. Both cimetidine and ranitidine elevate serum creatinine via decreased creatinine clearance but there's actually no evidence that it causes renal failure. For some reason, it just slows down the renal transportation of creatinine specifically. I wouldn't think of this as a side effect. Just realize that if you give someone cimetidine or ranitidine for a while, just don't run screaming from the room when you see they have elevated creatinine. That's pretty normal and doesn't mean they're going into kidney failure. So, if H2 receptor blockers are pretty much just worse versions of PPIs, why bother using them or even learning about them? Well, to some extent, that seems to be the consensus of the pharmaceutical industry. After the proton pump inhibitors came out, research on H2 blockers fell by the wayside. Nizatidine, the last H2 blocker invented, was invented before PPIs came out. Yet you still see these over-the-counter section of pharmacies everywhere with household names like Pepsid and Zantac. The main advantage of the H2 blockers is that they have a faster onset of action and a shorter half-life of activity. So they may be suitable for people who only have mild reflux esophagitis symptoms that need intermittent treatment. And that wraps up the H2 blockers. Let's recap this section with a flash quiz. Your question is, which H2 blocker has the most side effects? And what are two of these side effects? Go ahead and pause the video if you need time to think about it. The answer is cimetidine. And as for the side effects, there are actually a bunch of correct answers. The most serious ones are the fact that cimetidine is a P450 inhibitor and that it's an anti-androgenic drug. It's the C in both of those really long and slightly ribald mnemonics. It's also known for causing dizziness and even confusion in the elderly, and it, along with ranitidine, can increase serum creatinine. But remember, it's not actually a sign of kidney failure. 